What's up Dirt Tracks fans? Luke here again with another walk around video here in our super top secret walk around video location. You probably noticed a lot of them are done here. This is right outside our office in our backyard. Not so top secret really. But uh, I wanted to get, bring you guys another walk around video this time on Yamaha's 2019 Kodiak 700 SE. Now, I have put some miles on this vehicle and have some pretty good opinions of it. But I wanted to talk more in the beginning about what is a Kodiak 700 SE and uh, yeah, what does it have, what does it not have? I guess also somewhat of somewhat importance is how does it compare to a Grizzly? Because that's an important thought, right? First of all, uh, this Kodiak uses Yamaha's 686cc single. So. As many people who follow the industry know, there was a time when Yamaha used the 686. Then they went to the 700 single, like official 700 single, and it had some reliability issues. It just wasn't, it wasn't up to Yamaha's standards, so they now have gone back to the 686, which is a, a pretty much a literal bulletproof motor. I mean, literally this motor has never given anybody any trouble. It's fantastic. Um, I, it's not a secret. It's underpowered, you know, for the 700 class or whatever. It's it's underpowered, but it's a great motor. And at least you know that no matter what, you will never be stranded because of your motor. You'll also probably never be stranded because of your Ultramatic CVT. Yamaha has a stellar reputation, rightly deserved, for their CVT's durability. And this one has it. So, yay. Steel racks, of course, with... Yamaha's crinkle paint or whatever they call it coating whatever it is they still scratch and rust but I have come to appreciate steel racks more after having used them for more utility type purposes they there is no question at all tying stuff down on a steel rack is infinitely easier than on a plastic rack so is that the most important consideration for you I don't know if it is an important consideration at least you know what your Yamaha comes with the other thing too, I guess there's another couple points to be made about steel racks, but let's say you were to roll this vehicle or flip it over and you bend your rack, you might be able to just bend it back or take it to somewhere and have it bent back and weld it if you needed to. You wouldn't necessarily have to buy a complete new rack. If you did have to buy a complete new rack, it would be cheaper because it's just steel versus, you know, some fancy plastic rack with all kinds of extra stuff on it. So there's a consideration. Another consideration uh, one of my colleagues made was that there are people, ranchers, you know, farmers, people who are more utility focused who actually take the time to weld extra implements onto their racks. And you can't do that, obviously, with a plastic rack. So that's something to consider. I don't think very many people do that. But if you're that person, here's your steel racks. Yay. Yamaha's, uh, the Grizzly has got this single headlight, gauge pod mounted headlight, looks pretty cool, kind of looks mean, kind of looks almost transformer-ish in a way. Dual brakes, front and rear, which is something very few ATVs actually have these days. Uh, you know, a good gauge package, it's a digital gauge package that has lots of good information on there. Easy to use, easy to read. It's definitely a step up from the original Kodiaks when they first came out. I don't even think they had gauges, and then when they did, they were just a tiny little one-line LCD. So this is a big improvement. One thing I gotta say about this vehicle that I like um, is storage. And it's not like there's an excessive amount of storage, but just having this storage compartment right here, right in front of you, right where you probably would want it most for easy access, that's handy. I like that. Plus, it's way up high where it's going to be out of the water. You know, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And it's something that a lot of ATVs have storage, but it's almost impossible to access. So for this guy, it's right there. You got your 12-volt outlet down here. Uh, odd location for the key. I don't like it. They should move it up onto the onto the gauge pod, but that's a small point. Um, you know, with 4x4, when talking about 4x4, you've got Yamaha's um, locking diff here. Three positions. So... You've got uh, two-wheel drive, basic two-wheel drive right now. Come on, focus. Sorry. Camera doesn't like to focus on little red dots like this one, apparently. Nope, not going to do it. So I'll just do it from far away. Easy solution. Two-wheel drive, 
push that in. You've got four wheel drive with an auto locking front diff or like a, like a limited slip front diff rather. And you flip this guy sideways, that does nothing. Push that out, now you're in fully locked. So it's a very simple system to use, very straightforward, hard to screw up, uh, and it works, you know. Um, the fact that you can choose between a limited slip front and a fully locked front at your discretion is sort of my preference when it comes to uh, locking front differentials. I, I, I like auto locking systems for their simplicity and thoughtlessness on your part. Um, but I, you know, when you want it locked, it should lock. So that's my thought process. I think it's a tough looking ATV, you know, the Kodiak, it's the little brother to the Grizzly. Uh, it's kind of a downscaled version of the Grizzly. It's got fewer this, fewer that, lower end specs, but <clears throat> it's still tough looking, you know, you wouldn't have to make any excuses to your buddies looking at this thing after you bought one. One uh, component that I think is missing, we'll talk about in a minute, is a winch, but we'll talk more about that in just a second. So this vehicle has 7.6 inches of front end travel and 9.1 inches of rear end travel. Seems like an odd combo. You know, you're like an inch and a half difference between the two. Why they couldn't be equal, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this vehicle rides relatively well it's it's sprung pretty soft sprung and valve pretty soft so it gives it a decently plush ride um, certainly you notice the lack of travel when comparing it to other vehicles that have nine ten inches of travel in the front but it's not something that would deter me from buying this vehicle uh, buying a kodiak simply because of that and the rear end works really well as well obviously it's fully independent uh, preload only adjustable shocks uh, springs rather shock suspension whatever you want to call it both ends so you got no compression adjustability but lots of ground clearance, full full size two inch hitch receiver that can tow 1300 pounds, which is pretty impressive uh, and nothing to scoff at. So, you know, you can get work done with this thing for sure. So let's talk about the special edition package. What does that actually mean? And what are you getting for your money? Well, special edition in terms of a Kodiak 700 is a paint job. And I'm just gonna come right out and say it right now. This is the nicest paint job on any ATV I've ever seen. I absolutely love it. Uh, I mean, this camera is doing a decent job of showing you this blue, but in person it's even more impressive. It is just flipping sexy. I love it. Everyone who sees it says, wow, that's the nicest color I've ever seen on any ATV. And they're right. So, you know, SE package win there. You also get these nice looking aluminum wheels. Now they are not bead locks, um, just a standard aluminum wheel, but they're really nice looking. Um, something Yamaha used to struggle with putting nice looking wheels on their vehicles. Now they're doing it no problem. Um, but you know, you've got a set of uh, 25 inch Maxxis tires on here. And again, these aren't, I'm not going to say that these are an overly impressive tire. They're a Maxxis tire. That's good. They're 25 inches. Also, I guess, I guess 25 inches is really sort of the that's like the, the lower limits of what ATVs come with today, but they're a nice tire. Um, but they're nothing to write home about. So really special edition package, you get the wheels, the tires are, well, replace those. Um, there's not a lot else to the special edition package. Um, that's, you know, it's kind of it. Uh, the special edition package, I guess what, what is special about it is the Kodiak special edition package gets the, you know, three-way locking diff and the nice gauge. That's something that other Kodiak models don't get. So that's something to think about and it is a special edition type thing. So that's good. Um, but there's really not much to it. Let's be honest. Let's all just be honest for a second. There's not much to the special edition here. And one notable thing that I think is missing, which is something I alluded to earlier, is a winch. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think I can think of another special edition package from anybody that doesn't include a winch of some kind. The hole in the front of the vehicle is massive, and it's like, hey, look at this big hole. Let's fill that with a winch, or let's not. Let's fill it with a winch, guys. Come on, get that done. That should be in there. Special edition, paying more money. Give me a winch. So here's my thoughts on the Kodiak 700, and this is, uh, I say this in my test ride, so you guys will be able to hear a little bit more about it there, but the value of this vehicle is through the roof. Now, I'm, I'm harping a little bit on the special edition because it doesn't include a ton of stuff, but the reality is um, this vehicle is 
the EPS model, obviously, because it's special edition, it's the highest end EPS. Yamaha's EPS works great. So you're getting EPS, you're getting a digital gauge, shiftable 4x4 with a locking front diff, um, 686cc single. You're getting basically everything you get with a Grizzly of similar package specs for, I, I want to say it's like a couple grand less. Now the Grizzly has more front end travel. That would be one thing that it has more of. Um, I would say it's maybe just a little bit tougher looking. You can get the Grizzly with a more gnarly wheel and tire package. So yay there. But you're saving a couple grand here. So here's my thoughts. Here's my roundup on the Kodiak. The Kodiak fills the space that the Grizzly once filled in Yamaha's lineup. This is essentially, for all intents and purposes, this is a Grizzly for less money. To me, the smartest thing Yamaha would do right now is take the Grizzly as we know it, discontinue it, and bring it out with a new motor, new chassis, new motor to, to make it stand apart from this vehicle, which is almost a Grizzly. So then you would have your 686 single occupying that value segment, big bore value segment, um, giving people great deal, but lacking a few things, maybe lacking a bit of horsepower, lacking some travel, things like that. Nothing that, a, that the average person is going to gripe about, too much about. And then give us a new Grizzly with a twin that puts out more power, you know, plusher travel, more features, whatever, something to compete with the rest of the industry's 850 class sled uh, vehicles right now, 850 class ATVs. That makes sense to me. And I got to think that the writing is on the wall for the Grizzly when you look at this vehicle, because it is so close to the Grizzly for so much less money. So I'm not harping on the Grizzly. I'm not saying it's not a great vehicle because it still is. But I think that the Kodiak legitimizes the 686 more than the Grizzly does and occupies that 686 single, you know, space better than the Grizzly does right now. And I think it leaves room for something new from Yamaha. So let's all keep our fingers crossed because we've been dying for that for so long. So there you go. There's the Kodiak 2019 SE edition. Um, spent a lot of time on this thing so far. Tried a bunch of combinations. We really like it. Uh, it's worked really good when you keep it in context for what it is. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, outrunning any 1,000 Can-Ams any day of the week. But for what it is, and definitely for the price, it's a stellar value. This is a winner of an ATV. This is a home run. If you bought this thing, you would be, you'd have all the right in the world to uh, to snicker on your way out the door because you got such a great deal. So I think that it's, uh, it's a great ATV. I really like it. Um, interesting to see what happens next with Yamaha with their bigger bore vehicle. They have the motor. Let's see it put in an ATV. Hope you guys like this video. Hope you guys like these walk around videos. We like making them for you. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Definitely hit the like button if this video did something for you. Uh, we appreciate all of that. And feel free to comment down below. We do read comments. Um, respond to some of them. Not to the mean ones. Maybe we do to the mean ones more. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, there you go, 2019 Kodiak 700 SE. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching Dirt Tracks Television. For more great content, click on one of the links on the screen and make sure to tune back every day for fresh new content in season on Dirt Tracks TV.